All right, welcome to the baking video. In this video, I'll show you how to bake your high poly uh, mesh with your low poly. And it's going to be a pretty awesome video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually explode it. So what I mean by exploding, I will actually just move parts that are loose away like this. Move it like this. Okay, as you can see, I actually moved all the parts that I don't, that are not a part of the main body away. So what's the function of this? You will actually learn it soon enough. Cancel. Um, so go to import, merge, and get the uh, fire hydrant, you know, the high poly one in. Okay, so now we have the high poly fire hydrant. I want you to actually first get rid of the soft chamfer and make it a bit softer. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to get rid of all the all the um, bolts except for these ones we have on the low poly. So essentially all the bolts except the ones that we have on the low poly. So this is good enough. And now I actually want you to explode. First of all, delete these chains. And now essentially just, um, yep, that's it. So what you're gonna do now, actually just a second, delete and get rid of that one okay now you want to actually have your high poly overlap with your low poly and you want it to make it overlap as well as possible like this so I'm here I'm just trying to make it overlap pretty well so take the bolt Actually, just first of all, take uh, select all the bolts and get rid of, or just you know reduce the chain fair amount, like this, like this, and then just move it out to the other bolt and make it overlap. So this is good. Now do it for all the bolts we have. Alright, so the last bolt is pretty much this one. So just quickly go ahead and do it as well. Now this little piece over here, over to that piece, and now uh, the small little chain, get rid of all the other chains, and then just move it out, like this, rotate it. Okay, essentially we're done exploding. Now you can actually select the low poly, go to projection, pick list, 
and just like everything. And hit add. Now go to cage and actually move it out till it coats the high poly and the low poly. So make sure everything is coated. And as you can see, since I moved everything with the same amount, some pieces are, you know, some pieces are really bad. So I'm just gonna quickly make it tighter. And the closer the cage is to the object, the better the bakes are. So just go ahead and do some refinings. Okay, that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a test bake. So go to press 0 for render to texture, enable projection, add a normal map, 512 by 512, go to desktop and name it test bake or whatever, hit OK, and just hit render. And as you can see, the red parts show every ray miss. So what I have to do now, I'm going to have to go back and see where my rays are missing. Or if I forgot any. Anything. So hit yes. This is overlapping. Oops, I uh, forgot this one. <coughs> Makes sense, so I'm just gonna quickly take this one and move it to here. Okay, um, actually, these two are missing as well, so that's pretty much my bad. Uh, but it's a five minute fix, not even a minute, sorry. Um, yep, that's it, and I'm gonna actually just press zero again, and hit render again. Select the low poly first, hit, now hit render, and let's check it out now. And as you can see, this bake is pretty, pretty awesome, because as you can see, we're not getting any Ramus, which is awesome, and I'm gonna actually bake a 4K map, but I'm trying. I'm gonna try to bake it out inside X normal. Now, for X normal, you need a cage. Not you don't really need a cage, but it's recommended to use a cage. So I'm actually gonna export the cage. So as you can see, when I now delete it, let me just delete it and click on that. I have cage, and I'm gonna export the cage. So export selected. Hit OBJ and cage. And cage hydrant. Okay, so export it in triangles. Now delete it, get the low poly, and export the low poly, export selected in triangles. So hydrant no export, and then hit con uh, control and I to select the high poly and then just export, export selected hydrant high okay it's going to take a while obviously so I'm just gonna let it um, export it for a couple of seconds and now it should go really fast Okay, hit done. So what I'm gonna do is now is I'm gonna open X normal. Uh, 
go to high definition maps, clear everything first, add meshes, hydrant high, then hydrant low, baking options, oh, I forgot to browse an external cage file, so get your cage, okay, uh, 4k maps, so I'm gonna actually yep, name it hydrant, delete this folder, uh, no, name it hydrant, save, and normal maps are generated pretty quickly inside XNormal, so I'm actually just going to generate the normal map real quick, and as you can see, the normal map is actually um, saving the high poly information, so we can actually apply the normal map onto the low poly, and it will actually give us the high poly details even though we don't have it on the low poly which is really cool so as you can see it's really fast but the aim and occlusion will take a while obviously but I'll just go ahead and let it render it out so <clears throat> now I'm gonna open Marmoset toolback to just check on the file. I'm going to actually change the sky to desert road. I'm going to import the mesh which is my hydrant low. It's exploded obviously. So I'm going to actually go to the normal map and just check on it now. Uh, albedo, get it down. Uh, sky, go to color reflectivity, reduce the gloss <clears throat> and as you can see the bakes came out really great I mean, cannot complain about the bakes really and <clears throat> now I hope you can see just a second let me just get another one Maybe garage Okay, I hope you can see how the normal map is affecting our model. As you can see, we don't really have the details in there, but since we have a normal map applied, we, can, we actually do have these details because of our high poly object. So if I quickly go to ambient occlusion, turn it up a bit. let's not enable local reflections but um, as you can see the bolts how nice they're looking and if I enable wireframe let's just take something crazy not crazy okay let's just take white and as you can see details like this are not actually modeled in but the normal map is actually doing the work for us which is actually pretty awesome and again the base came out really good so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to back to X normal close it and render out an aim and occlusion aim and occlusion will take a lot at least on my end not really a lot but it takes longer than the normal map so I'm gonna actually just let it render out but before I'm gonna actually quit or end the uh, tutorial what I want you to do is I want you to get rid of the high poly now just a second get rid of the high poly um, select all replace it and now what I want you to do is I want you to assemble everything back so put the bolts back together or put the bolts back where they belong to alright and the chain
basically put everything back. And also copy this pieces of uh, this piece because now we're actually done baking and making our uh, low poly, so we actually can put everything back in place, which is really cool. <clears throat> and on the front as well, let's go to the left viewport. Okay, um, the bolts obviously. And just roughly do them. Don't have to be perfect. this and same here as well so I'm actually just eyeballing everything Okay, I'm going to do this one off camera. What you want to do is you want to actually just take the chains, right? Take them and just, just a second, you know, just uh, make a chain connection to this hole over here. And uh, I'm gonna do one, and I want the rest. I want you to do the rest alone. Okay. Um. Yep. Uh, so, do this one for this one and this one and then just export it and this is going to be your final and on this one we're going to apply the normal map and texture on this one so let's see how so aim and occlusion is uh, baking really nicely and yep the normal map is looking pretty fly as well so I'm gonna have to cut the recording now and go to the editing and I will see you in the texturing part, so I'm looking forward to that, and goodbye. I really want to uh, cut this video in this um, baking part because I actually made up my mind and, you know, uh, having the fire hydrant with the chains is very, very um, expensive in terms of uh, poly count. Or triangle count so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make uh, these two pieces as a separate object I'm going to bake and texture so what I'm just going to do I'm just going to detach those pieces I'm gonna go to the high poly uh, attach it with uh, the chain high poly so now these two are one object Editable poly. <clears throat> okay, let's go to the low one. Okay, so since I now detached it, I should have separate 
a separate um, UV island for that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually fill the space as well as possible. <clears throat> because, you know, when having this in the actual map, it's very uh, expensive. You know, it's 6K triangles. And I want it to be an extra piece so anyone who wants to can edit edit uh, to the fire hydrant and without the fire uh, without these chains the fire hydrant is actually just 2.7k triangles which is acceptable and this is why I actually just want the tri uh, the chain and the ring over here to be separate so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my low poly and rearrange the UVs because as you can see I got rid of the chain and the rings over there so what I can do is I'm just quickly trying to fill these gaps you don't have to you know it's very up to you but I'm just you know filling some gaps and you know making the smaller pieces a bit bigger now So make it bigger, just to fill some space, you know. Okay, that's acceptable. I'm actually going to um, collapse it too. And I'm actually just going to check again if everything is going right. Yep. So I'm actually just going to collapse it. And the low pieces, uh, I want to make sure they're separate. And apparently, apparently they are separate, so I don't really have to worry about that anymore. I'm just going to rearrange the chain like this. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, bake it again separately. I want this piece is to be over here. Yeah, I'm just going to bake it now separately. So I'm just going to go ahead and bake it as nor as I did before so um, just uh, select your low poly uh, which is uh, over here make a projection and pick a list now just uh, select everything add <coughs> shaded cage push it out like so now just uh, like like before just uh, adjust some stuff where it's necessary <clears throat> so it's pretty easy it's gonna quickly do everything Okay. <clears throat> right. Uh, what about this? Okay. So it seems like we can move ahead. <clears throat> so, like before, just export the cage, <clears throat> like cage, and then just uh, delete the. <clears throat> excuse me. Delete the modifier and export the cage so what I'm going to name it, I'm going to name it cage no, just a second cage hydrant only Oops, actually wrong format. Not FBL, FBX, but OBG. K 
cage hydrant actually just uh, okay and delete it and now obviously the low poly so export it hydrant hydrant low exported and I got rid of the files I had before obviously so now invert the selection deselect these pieces okay now you go to export export selected hydrant <clears throat> hydrant high and this will take a while obviously So I'm really sorry to at this video uh, at this clip uh, after I finished my baking video, but you know it's, it was very necessary for some people who don't have this polycount budget and think uh, 6K is too overload. All right, so now for the chains, uh, make sure that uh, you've selected the low poly like so. Now you go to projection, shaded, cage, push to put the cage out and now just export the cage. Cage, uh, let's call it cage chain. <clears throat> so delete it so you uh, have the cage chain now export this one as well. <clears throat> so cage chain. Okay. Now delete it. Get the high poly. Export selected. High chain. Now select the low poly. Export selected, low chain. Alright, so <clears throat> now what I want to do is I want to get rid of the high poly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna deselect these first. Now get rid of the high poly, now get rid of this one. Okay, basically what I will do now is I will actually make two groups now. One is for the hydrant only. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to reassemble everything. Okay. Um, the bolts obviously as well. Mm, over here. Press it for, make sure everything is looking good. And I've selected everything and now I'm just roughly placing. I showed this already, but it doesn't matter. Okay, and now these this piece. I'm actually going to add it right to the middle. Rotate it to like here. Rotate it to the front. place it over here as well and then just move it out so like this <clears throat> and obviously this one as well Give it a 
Okay, so this is actually what I want to export as an own object. Okay, so I'm just going to select it, export, export selected, and I'm going to name it just Hydrant. Hydrant. Final. Go to desktop and get rid of the hydrant final file. <clears throat> now just export it. Okay, that's good. Um, now I actually want you to, you know, remember when we I told you to, you know, just take it and just, you know, tr try to make uh, the chains connect like this. So, <clears throat> what I want you to do now, essentially, is to do that again. I know it can be painful. This probably is painful. Uh, hopefully, I'm not getting too much heat for that, but you, you do have to do that. And once you have done that, then we can actually just... Um, so once you, you have done that, what you want to do is first off you want to first get rid of that chain So I'm just going to do one to show you what I mean. Okay, so I want you to copy this now. Flip it, no, not flip it, but copy it and move it to the other side like so <clears throat> move these ones up a bit like this okay so now you're gonna do the same for the front I'm gonna quickly do that So go to left viewport, detach this, now copy this, did I actually select too much? Okay, so do it again, uh, select it. First, just select one of this, <clears throat> detach, which you can find here, and now I can just rotate it easily, so a 90 degrees, and now just move it down, like so, move it in. Okay, and now pretty much do the same. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to take one and just try to make a landmark here. And that looks good enough. Maybe something like this is better. And now just pretty much start adding the chains.
move it out like this, move it in like this. Okay, the chains are done. So what I want you to do now is actually just first of all attach and this one as well. Okay, so now this is a separate group. I'm gonna export it as well. Export selected chains. Just name it chains and export it. Okay, I'm gonna delete this and go out. So now what I did actually is I now have the freedom to actually just you know say like hydrant final okay this is my hydrant final without the chains and let's say okay I, I'm really missing something out but and I want the chains so I can actually just you know get the chains back but if you're like the guy who said okay the chains are too high poly uh, not too high poly but the chains are adding quite to the uh, triangle count then you can actually just say okay I'm just gonna leave the chains out and just get rid of them like uh, second I can already select the chains I can just you know say let's get rid of the chains so now you don't have the chains but only the hydrant which is really cool and I'm quickly gonna delete the MTL files I have no idea what they are for so just delete them and open the XNormal now we have to have a quite a bit of baking to do so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a new folder name it hydrant 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 <laughs> just a second hydrant uh, now I'm gonna actually bake everything again so add meshes um, hydrant high add meshes hydrant low forgot to add the cage browse external cage file now you're gonna get, go to cage hydrant and actually don't render out the ambient occlusion now again uh, put the padding to yeah let's let's keep it to 8 and the output folder or oh, put it to here I just name it hydrant hydrant okay so generate maps and normal map is obviously going a bit faster <clears throat> and I'm quickly going to add the chains in the meantime so as you can see the chains are not a part of the actual hydrant anymore but they're just an extra and I kind of live with that However, I'm going to change the positioning a bit, so I'm just going to import it into 3ds Max, go to Chains, Import, and I'm quickly just want to reposition them. Especially this one. Okay. I want to move it to the center quite a bit more. replace it and then export again
Okay, it doesn't matter, seems okay like this. So I think the normal map is baked out for the hydrant. And as you can see, it's not only going to affect the um, hydrant. So now I'm going to bake it for the chains. So clear all meshes and just add mesh. Not add mesh. Yes, add, oh, sorry, just add high chain. Add meshes, uh, low chain, put a cage, 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 there we go, okay, so for the, um, for the ca uh, chains, don't actually, um, uh, don't actually, just a second, and don't bake ambient occlusion for it, we don't need it, um, so just bake a normal map out for it. Right, remember, don't bake an ambient occlusion for it, it's really important, we don't need it. Okay, close it. And now if I go to another material and select this one, as you can see it's affecting the uh, only affecting the the uh, chains now. So this is what I wanted. I wanted to be sep uh, I wanted them to be separate. Okay, so now I'm actually gonna want to do is I actually want to bake another ambient occlusion. This one is going to be okay. So what you want to do again is to just bake the ambient occlusion for the uh, hydrant. and you know just bake an ambient occlusion and now this piece I just have to tell you because I cannot wait till the ambient occlusion is finished and record again so right after you bake your ambient occlusion what you want to do is this is not really important so what you want to do now is after baking the ambient occlusion you're going to take the uh, hydrant final OBJ and just input it it for the high definition mesh and the low definition mesh. Just put the, uh, you know, this. Let me show you again. Just, just a second. This file over here, hydrant, uh, hydrant final. I want you to put that into the uh, high poly slot and the low poly slot, and then just bake a name in occlusion. And I forgot to show you the settings real quick, so this is my mini occlusion setting and this is my normal map setting. But yeah, after you've baked the exploded ambient occlusion, put uh, input the uh, hydrant final in both of them and bake an ambient occlusion. And I will show you what to do with that, what to do with it in the next part. So for now, Thank you for watching and take care.